good. Just good to be alive, ain't it? Yeah. Amen. Turn and look at your neighbor and say, you sure look better than I do. Praise the Lord. God is so real. We're excited having Brother Stan Cook with us again today. Um, appreciate Brother Cook's ministry, his music, his singing, and but both of all the ministry of the Word of God. And I get, you know, you can, they, they sing anywhere. You know, they, they sing when some cardinal guy knocks a home run. You know, because they don't sing what we're saying. You know, but they do sing. And uh, so we, we're not saved by singing. This man's going to preach to us. Now tonight may be different. He's going to, he's going to do a singing for us, but today he's going to preach the Word of God. Any time that I've ever called Brother Cook, if it's at all possible, if he's available at all, even if he has to make a long drive, he always comes to be with us at Covenant Church. We appreciate that, Brother Cook. Appreciate, appreciate your ministry. Appreciate your family. Thank you for being with us today. And, uh, but we're going to ask him to come and just take the service and uh, sing or whatever he wants to do this morning and just obey the Lord. Everybody pray right now with me. Father, bless Brother Cook today. God, anoint him, Lord, and use him in every way, Lord God. Fill somebody with the Holy Ghost today in Jesus' name. Oh, the Lord is good. Amen. Bless you richly. You may be seated. Praise God. Wonderful to be back with all of you. Good to be with Brother and Sister Creasy. Somebody, somebody sitting back there close to Brother Joel. Do you feel like stepping in his office? I think I left my Dollar Tree glasses in there. Or somebody back there helped me. There's some reading glasses. Got to have them. Help me, Jesus. Careful, don't break them. They're expensive. Thank you. Appreciate it. I got a bunch of pair of these. All right. Hey, that's better. I can see my, my iPad now. Wonderful to be with you today. I think it's been... Uh, it was either... I think it was December, the last time I see that I was here, and uh, I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> take me so long to be able to come back, but I'm glad y'all finally forgave me for it. <laughs> and, uh, it's great to be here today. Amen. Praise God. God is so good. Awesome. I'm thankful for His goodness. I appreciate good friends. Brother, I've told y'all this before, I'm sure, but my pastor always told me to treat my enemies good because chances are I made them. <laughs> but I thank God for friends. The scripture said, Paraphrase, not exact words, but scripture said if a man wants friends, show yourself friendly. I had a distant relative one time, was just griping about our church. He said, Nobody ever speaks to me. And uh, I finally one day had heard that one too many times, and I reminded him. In a kind way, with a smile on my face. I remind, because I sat on the platform, I was the drummer, and then I led the services after that, and I said, you know, it appears to me that every service you get here about 10 minutes after it starts, and as soon as the preacher starts any indication of the altar call, you leave. So I said, when would anybody speak to you? Just ducked his head and mumbled a few things and walked off. 
I'm thankful for friends, but you got to show yourself friendly. Right. Amen. And so I'm glad to be among friends today. And this statement has nothing to do with age, but I remember Brother Tenney saying many years ago, you can't make new old friends. Good, good. Just so you better take care of your friends. So I thank God for Brother and Sister Creasy. They've been a friend to me, my family, and this church. They're very, very kind to us. I, uh, as you can tell, this has dragged into several months now. I'm still leaning on the pulpit due to back pain when I stand. I've, I've been prayed for so many times, I've got the olive oil buildup on my forehead, <laughs> and my faith is still high. I still preach healing. I still preach miracles. It's not a lack of faith. It's just evidently for some reason God has allowed this for this particular space and time. So I'm not only leaning on Him, I'm leaning on the pool. You heard about that woman that drowned from I think she's from Great Britain, and she drowned on the cruise ship. They released her name, and it was Eileen Dover. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ain't listening. <laughs> Eileen Dover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brother Magruder left the hospital many years ago. Baptist Hospital in Memphis after visiting my aunt who was about to pass from this life. Body had been ravaged by cancer. He didn't know what to say to try to encourage her, but she was an RN and she knew what was going on. And she must have seen him struggling for words and she took her hand while she laid in that bed and waved it over her body like this and said, it's all right, Pastor. So this is why we live for God. When we don't know what else to do, we just lean on Him. He come down the elevator, he got in his vehicle, headed back to Kenneth, and wrote the words on a Kleenex, I lean on you, Lord. I lean on you. For the things that I need, I lean on you. When I don't know what to do, I've got the faith he'll see me through to supply my every need. I lean on the Lord. So we're all leaning either literally or elsewise on Jesus today. And it's a great thing that he is our rock, our fortress, our shield, our strength. And I'm privileged to be here today. It's 11, 12. I know you're getting hungry. I'm already hungry. I just usually preach to everybody comes praise through. So if y'all just come right now, we can go on to lunch. Praise God. Good to see everybody. Sister Creasy asked me this morning. I was playing a little music during the sound check. And she said, Is that do you have a new C D? And I said, I do. Pretty recent. She said, Well, is that song right there on it? I said, Yes. She said, Oh, I need one of those. I said, I'll trade you for an El Camino. <laughs> it didn't take her two seconds to say, No dice. <laughs> Just can't get some people to work with you. <laughs> but I, I do have a a new CD that I haven't had here, just been out a couple of months, so if you like that today, you can get that as well as all the others. That makes 10 now. And I've got fresh stock of those Louisiana problems with me today that y'all remember, oh, they're good. And so I got those back today. And uh, if you don't have cash, I can do credit card, check whatever's best for you. But it's great to be here. Thank you for being so kind. 
Let's try to sing a little bit. Tonight we'll sing a little more, should the Lord allow. I've got a little nasal sound going on due to some sinus mess, but when you sing country, nasal's good. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know as long as as long as the voice hangs in there we'll have a good time together today amen praise God it was the morning of the third day the women found the stones rolled away an angel told them he had risen. Come and see where Jesus lay. Now I see Mary in the garden. She met Jesus there on that day. He said, go and tell them I have risen. When she found them, I can almost hear her say, He's alive, the tomb is empty, that stone is rolled away. There is nothing left but grave clothes, death could not make him stay. Jesus conquered death with victory. Praise God, He is alive. Just a little bit of track for me, please, up here. Now I was burdened so deep in sin when I came to Him on that day. And when I called in faith, believing, I felt sin's burdens roll away. Though I've not seen that empty tomb, I believe it just the same. And since that moment, Jesus made me whole with joy I can proclaim. stone is rolled away. There is nothing left but great clothes. Death could not make him stay. I believe it, for I have seen him, for my heart still burns deep inside. Jesus conquered death with victory. Praise God, He is alive. Jesus conquered death with victory. Praise God, He is alive. Aren't you glad He's alive? song say if God is dead who's this living in my soul and if you ain't felt something stir in your soul lately it might be a good idea to check to see if anybody's in there hello glory Man, I feel all right today. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I've been around here so long, I, I probably tell the same stories. So that's a good thing about getting old. It ain't all bad. It's pretty neat to be able to hide your own Easter eggs. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, there's one. <laughs> and you put it there, didn't stick. <laughs> so, I, I remember the old story when something like this the young man that just received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. I think some people try to get the Holy Ghost but don't want no fire. But John said, the one coming after me, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Man, he was fired up. Boy, I don't know. But I remember my pastor. My pastor is pretty practical. I'm talking about Brother Bruder. He's not my pastor growing up, but all my ministry was. And he, he's just a pretty practical man. And he, he never tried to put us on a guilt trip right. for not winning souls. Right. Although he taught us to be soul winners, taught about our responsibilities to be soul winners. In fact, the, 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 uh, the initial reasoning, uh, Acts 1 and 8 says, for receiving the Holy Ghost is power to become witnesses. That's right. Not power to talk in tongues and run the aisles. It's power to become witnesses. That's right. And he, but he said the fact is we can talk about the statistics. How many people in the world don't have God? How many had not heard His name? And it's sad. It's every bit true. Right. But we can feel so guilty for what we're not accomplishing that we walk out the church door in no shape to witness. Come on, God. His point was, there's no, it's not accidental that the soul winners primarily in a church are the new converts. They don't know enough to feel condemned for not winning soul. They're just excited. Y'all missed me, didn't you? Nobody's taught them about it's their job to win souls. It's their responsibility to win so. They're just happy about what the Lord is doing in their life. And that's what we need to get back to. Is God doing something in your life and telling somebody else about it? Oh, Lord. Because very few people have I ever met that's just all of a sudden because they're condemned about not winning the soul decides I'm going to go win a soul. It's usually through the natural process of look what the Lord is doing in my life. And He will do it for you. Aren't you thankful? And, and so I heard the story about the new convert that he was so fired up. Y'all probably heard he was a welder, you know. And he's trying to, trying to get his boss to understand this new thing he had experienced. Boss was kind of, not kind of, but he was very cynical. And he said, how do I know you got the Holy Ghost? And the young man said, I feel it. And he said, well, I don't feel nothing. He said, I don't see nothing. How do I know? The young man got a little discouraged because he couldn't relate to the man how he was feeling. So one day, boss was welding along and a spark flew off the rod and down into his boot. He started hopping all over that shop. The young man may have been young, but he wasn't dumb. And he said, what's wrong with you? He said, man, a spark flew into my boot. He said, I don't see it. He said, I don't feel it. How do you know it's in? He said, because I feel it. That's the same way. I know God is living in my heart. Anybody know there's somebody living in your heart? Thank God that he's alive. It's 11.23. According to him, i got 37 minutes. Sing another song to and preach, but I'm not going to preach very long. Yeah, that was last Sunday. <laughs> Probably from you. <laughs> I, I don't know how y'all feel about 
and being here today. I'm honored to be here. I know Sister Michelle's disappointed because I see on Facebook every week how she's enjoying her favorite preacher. <laughs> she don't get to hear him today. She is stuck with me. <laughs> That's the way you ought to feel. I don't know how your mama feels about that, but I ain't getting in the middle of that. <laughs> He's your favorite too? Well, if he had bought me a Camino, he might be my favorite. <laughs> it's wonderful to see everybody here today. Praise God. God is good. I'm going to sing a song. I did include it on this uh, latest project, but I usually, most of you that have bought music of mine through the years, <clears throat> Lord help me, you will know this is the case. Uh, even on my newer CDs, I just typically almost always include at least one or two older songs. And I do that intentionally, one, because I enjoy them. Number two, I know that most people that like my music do. I do know where my market is. And people, uh, uh, here's another thing you've probably heard me say, people Ask me sometimes, Brother Stan, when are you going to make some music the young people will like? <laughs> and I always tell them, young people ain't got no money. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't going to buy nothing. <laughs> they just come and shout on the credit. <laughs> I'm not knocking young people. I love them. I love them. I love them. But they're not my best customers. <laughs> kind of know, we got to kind of know where your market is. And so this song, you will recognize it. I have sung it for years. I started to say since I was little, but I don't remember that far <laughs> back. But uh, it originated in West Tennessee. Both men involved in the story of this song have passed on now. The first man's name was Jerry Haynes. Jerry Haynes was preaching a meeting in West Tennessee many years ago. Stay in a little town. I wish I knew the town, but I can't remember. And uh, I knew both of these guys. And they were having quite a revival. And one day in a little <coughs> motel, that he was staying in. The phone rang. This was his testimony. The man on the other end of the line asked him, is this Reverend Haynes? He said, yes, sir. He said, well, I'm Dr. So-and-so, and introduced himself. I've been a doctor in this community for many, many years. And he said, the reason I'm calling, he says, I've heard you're having a revival. Haynes said, yes, sir. He said, well, my wife is dying with cancer. <coughs> Medically, I've done everything I can do. But I thought I'd call you because I've heard that you've been healing people. Brother Haynes says, sir, many people are being saved and many have been healed. But I want you to know I can't heal anybody. But then he said a line that he later shared this testimony to another friend who was a songwriter by the name of Jack Cat. Jack wrote songs like Jesus Use Me, Oh What a Happy Day, More to Go to Heaven For. I owed a debt I could not pay and it was growing every day, but Jesus paid it all. And Jerry was testifying to him. He said, the man said, you've been healing people. He said, no, I can't heal anybody. He said, well, I'm going to tell you something, doctor. I know a man Amen. who can. I'm telling you, on this Sunday morning, he still can. I can't take a heart that's 
broken Make it over again But I know a man Who can I can take A soul that's sin stained Wash it white as the snow And I know a man who can Some call to save the Redeemer of all If you feel no one can help you And your life is out of hand I know a man who can I can't walk upon the water I can't calm Life's raging sea, but I know a man who can. I can cause blinded eyes to open, or make the lame to get up and walk again. For he's my dearest friend If you feel nobody can help you And your life is out of hand I know a man who can house right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, Lord, minister somebody's heart and life. Somebody sitting here right now that needs you desperately. You are as close as the mention of your name. Show yourself strong on their behalf. Hey, hallelujah. 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 I'm so thankful that I know that man. I'm so thankful that I know him by name. Well, I, I could sing considerably more this morning, but I want to be with you. Uh, I want to be aware of the time. And, and uh, besides, all of you are coming back tonight. Amen. Thank you for that one amen, Sister Grace. <laughs> I plan to be here tonight. I don't know. <laughs> A light-hearted moment. I was in the pastor's office today with my friend. And his phone rang, you know, that newfangled flip phone he's got. <laughs> Jeez. Looking for your Model A out there. And uh, I just sat there and shook my head. Yeah, I could tell 
you know, by listening to one side of the conversation, it was somebody who wasn't coming today. And he thought he was kind, he hung up. I said, Bo, you ought to know better. I said, I was in a church out in Oklahoma several months ago, they were praying for a church auditorium. I noticed the pastor kept answering his phone or checking the text, and I told him, I said, that's the worst thing you can do on a Sunday morning. He said, why is that? I said, nobody's calling you just to say hello. <laughs> nobody's texting you to check on you. What you're going to get on Sunday morning is texts and calls from people saying, I ain't coming. <laughs> hello? Yeah. Where, how'd I get on that? <laughs> No oh, use talking about rain. You're going to be here tonight if it's going if it did rain. Yeah, I heard I heard one time it takes approximately uh, 90 gallons of water to baptize somebody, and approximately nine drops of water to keep them out of church once a month. <laughs> He didn't say that. I believe y'all know I'm just having fun with you, but a little truth in that. I saw a pastor friend of mine, and now nobody, nobody faults anybody for erring on the side of caution. I'm not radical. I'm not wacko. I mean, if it's coming a blizzard, I understand that. But I finally, I, you know, sometimes you just got to read between the lines. I saw a pastor this past winter post on Twitter, and he says, I know the roads are dangerous. If you can't make it, that's okay. We are having church because Walmart's open. <laughs> and if we don't have church, you'll go to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Glory. I'm glad you're here today. Y'all have been faithful and I thank you for coming. And I, so I don't want to, to uh, make you stay overtime. I, uh, I just, I'm going to be very honest with you. Uh, that's, that's kind of something I'm trying to get out of saying, so take that. Um, it just should be understood that when I say something, I'm being honest. You know, I worry about people that say too often, I'm, I'm honestly. Sorry. I worry about people that constantly tell me how humble they are. <laughs> I'm just humbled to be here. and I'm hum Well, that one humble's good, but the man's only humble till he realizes he is. <laughs> And uh, so I'm being, a better word may be transparent with you today. I don't have a polished message to preach to you. I'm going to approach you with just something the Lord stuck in my heart here in the night, last night. As we say in this terminology, in this generation, it probably won't be said after the day that I preached the pain off the walls. And frankly, you know what, you, you all know what it means when you just feel that nudge. And I said, Lord, I don't have this. I didn't have time to really delve into it and study it out. That's what I like to do before I try to preach something. And then I walked in here today. I sat down after visiting and Sunday school class had started and I was listening to the lesson today. Brother Mark, is that right? And Brother Mark, probably going by a lesson series or whatever, but uh, I thought, Lord, mercy. 
I didn't need to study it out. He's already said most of it. And I'm telling you the truth. I, so I knew what I was dealing with in my spirit. The Lord, I, I don't blame this on the Lord, but I believe it was the Lord. God does get blamed for a lot of stuff that He didn't do. And I, uh, I, I just kept hearing this, not hearing, but feeling this terminology of, and that's strange I used that word. Hope I'm not bothering y'all about leaning over. Uh, terminology, and, 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 and the Lord started dealing with my spirit, and I'm not going to, jack anybody up today and I'm not going to try to pastor I'm just going to try to talk to you from my spirit I'm not going to be all negative but I am going to be truthful and there is this challenge Let's see if I can read something to you Timothy I charge thee before God. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own, somebody say own, own, lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And I was pondering these things in my spirit. Pondering Proverbs 23, 23. Buy the truth. Sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Never said, Elder. Never did it say, rent the truth. Or lease the truth. said, buy the truth. And the Lord began to work on my spirit. And all I can do is share with what you, with what He tried to work on me. And that is the challenge that we are dealing with. I'm not being negative. I'm just trying to stress to us today in this church for the last 20 minutes or so of this service, that we can ill afford any of us ever slip into this state of, well, I will take God, but it's going to be on my terms. Yes, yes, yes. I tell you, when it comes to your relationships, you can do it on your terms. You can decide who you want to be friends with, who you want to be around, what kind of people you want to associate with. When it comes to your business dealings, you have a right to set the terms for what you put your name toward. You have the right to say, no, I don't agree with that, and I'm not going to sign it. Or you have the right to say, well, I'll sign that if you add this. Or add this. Or take this out. But when it comes to the truth. Right. And it comes to salvation. Yeah. And it comes to God. Yeah. We cannot come to God on our own terms. Right. The only way I will ever be saved is on His terms. Yeah. But I'm telling you as I stand here. And I'm not saying it as an old fuddy-duddy that has outlived its era and time. 
I'm telling you we are living in an era when everybody wants everything on their own terms. You're right. You're right. We choose our church based on what it will do for me. Right. We choose our church because whether I like their kind of music or not. Right. We choose our church because of what they will do for the young people or not. And there's some room for that and, and latitude for that. But I want to tell you something. We, we've got to get out of this multiple choice situation. It's not a multiple choice question when it comes to salvation. There is but one Lord and one faith and one baptism. One God who's Father of all, above all, and through all. And in you all. When... And I hope I don't come across as being ugly, but I'm going to preach the truth. We have become so, I say we, we are so blessed. We are so absolutely blessed that almost on everything we can say, no, I don't like that. I want this. I don't want a brown one. I want a red one. I don't want a green one, I want a blue one. Right. And I'm going to wait till you get a blue. Or I ain't going to buy it. Right. Hello? Come on, that's right. You tell me, right? And that's why we have so many different churches on every street. It's become a smorgasbord. If you don't like this one, just go to the next one. Till you find somebody that'll say it like you want to hear it. Right, right. But I'm telling you, with all the love in my heart, it ain't got nothing to do with what I want to hear. It's got everything to do with what I need to hear. And I need to hear the truth. It's my job as Timothy to preach the truth. And it's my job to remember to do it with all long suffering and doctrine. I'm going to preach it with love. I'm going to preach it with patience. And I'm going to preach it with kindness. But I am going to preach it because there are only one set of terms. Right. So right. So right. Right. Come on. And I'll be, as my granny used to say, I'll be John Brown. <laughs> I sat there in your chair in the office and I said, I wonder if this computer's hooked up to the internet. And I saw a little icon there. And I clicked on it. Sure enough. And I said, I wonder what Fox News is saying today. <laughs> and I clicked on Fox News. And there's a couple of lead stories. And just two or three stories down. I just printed it in case you don't believe me. There's an article that says why young people are leaving churches. And I started reading. I know I'm not preaching the paint off the walls, but here we go. It's a, it's a, it's a 2018 report. They polled P-O-L-L-E-D, polled or surveyed a growing group in America. This, this phrase absolutely tore my heart out. They polled a group in America. It, called, it calls itself religious nuns. N-O-N-E-S. Affiliate of nuns. A part of none. Don't claim any. The vast majority are ex-Christians and under the age of 35. And they ask these religious nuns, again, I'm not talking about N-U-N-S, why they reject affiliation with religion. And they gave them six possible responses. And quite to their surprise, not many responded to most of those responses. Some said, I don't like the position churches take on social and political issues. 
Some said, I don't like religious organizations, religious leaders, it's irrelevant, etc. However, the writer and the author soon discovered that most did not respond because they only gave them six reasons. And the religious nuns wanted to give their own reasons. And so they allowed them to speak for themselves. What then is the real reason people are leaving the faith? Why do they no longer identify with a particular religious, religious group? And here's what they said. I know, I know I'm not shouting at you. That's okay. Good stuff. Some said any kind of rational thought makes religion go right out the window. Some said learning about evolution when I went away to college. Some said lack of any sort of scientific or specific evidence of a creator. Many said I just realized somewhere along the line that I didn't really believe it. I can see that. I've experienced that. Many said I'm doing a lot more learning, studying, and kind of making decisions myself rather than listening to somewhere, someone else. When Christians walk away from the faith, more often than not, it's due to some form of intellectual skepticism. But that doesn't accurately reflect the rich history of the church. You've got to understand and Brother Mark shared it in the lesson this morning. If we're merely talking about re walking away from what somebody has said for 50 years, then you may have a point. But I'm not teaching just what somebody said. Yes, amen. I'm teaching what's in this book. Right, amen. amen. It's the Word of God. It is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. If you want to know the terms to salvation, those are the terms. There's only one door. And if you come another way, it's the same as a thief and a robber. I'm in the book. I'm not trying to be unkind. I'm just telling you somewhere in our intellectualism, we are heaped to ourselves, teachers, having itching ears, asking them to say what we want them to say. And if they won't say what we want them to say, then we drive down the street till we find someone else that will say what we want them to say. Right. 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 And then, people who walked away from the truth can get all over social media and pastor their Facebook church yeah. and tell how free they are right. and how wonderful it is. I'm so glad they're out of bondage. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be deceived. I know this is quiet. I know it's not polished. But I wouldn't be worth a nickel if I didn't tell you that this book warns us of such a day. It tells us there will be many false teachers. How do you know if a person is a false teacher? You get in the book. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. And therefore, as, Pat, as Brother Mark said earlier, therefore is the reason why we should get into His Word. Right. Amen. I understand people who walk away because all they're living is what they've been told. Right. Yes, sir. Because inevitably, you're going to start asking questions. Yeah. Just like every child asks questions. Right. Why? Why? Right. And simply as a parent, eventually you run out of answers, so you say, because I told you so. Right. Yeah. And sometimes 
People can ask and ask and we just say, because that's what we told you. But I'm telling you, we ought to be able to share with you from the Word of God yes. what we preach and what we teach. Yes. Yes. I'm not asking you to take the big boy's word for it. I'm telling you it's in God's Word. Yes, sir. God's Word. It's fascinating to me the amount of people that all of a sudden decide that it's a relic and it's ancient, and it's ridiculous to trust and believe in a God that they've never seen. But they believe in other stuff that they've never seen. Hello? At least be consistent. Right, right. Oh God, I ain't doing very good. I'm not trying to... to uh, win points but from the pastor or the pastor's wife today I know they believe the truth I'm trying to talk from my soul to try to share with anyone in this congregation or that's a member or visiting with us today this is more than just about what we happen to say from our mouths but it's from the word of the Lord and you need to understand that God's word in fact I've got it marked here I, I'd have to find it but I, I've got it somewhere here somewhere right here there it is Romans 3 and 4 God forbid but let God be true and every man a liar you don't have to take I'll tell you I can't keep up with the new doctrines I can't keep up with all the hogwash that's going on and you can have it this way and you can have it this way and somebody discovered people don't like vanilla ice cream only so they sell 31 flavors right right when it comes to ice cream i like all 31 of them but there's not 31 flavors of salvation there's only one god there's no other name under heaven. I wish somebody preached with me right now. There's only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that is the name of Jesus. I'm not, I've learned, I've told y'all this before. I've studied the book. I'm not a scholar, but I'm a student. Study to show yourself approved. Hello? Yeah. So I found in the book, I never have found that criticism is one of the gifts of the Spirit. That's right. So I'm not trying to be a critic. Everybody's a critic these days. They want to be a food critic. I, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's really, you know... There's really no good to be said even about that. Hello? Yeah. Why would I want to critique every meal my wife cooks? Not every time does it come out perfect. Not every time does it come out just right. But it sustained me. Not every sermon your pastor preaches is going to be in the Hall of Fame. But he's preached the truth to you. Somebody needs to hear me right now. Yeah. Don't you be deceived and hoodwinked by these charlatans and these Johnny come ladies that just preach what you want to hear. Right. Because your flesh will lead and my flesh will lead us the wrong way. Right. Right. The Bible says the flesh is never full. You'll never satisfy your flesh. If you go, if you left, walked out of this one today and go to another church that will say, not, not bother you about some things, you how you live and how you don't live, and, and they line up with your philosophy, but in, the, in a matter of weeks or months, they're going to say something that don't line up with your philosophy. That's right. That's right. Hello? I ain't doing very good. I hit a brick wall somewhere here. I tell you what wall I hit. The devil don't like it when we preach the truth. And I'm not being unkind. We believe more in what you just don't do. That's not what we're all about. I reject those chains that all we're about is what we can or cannot do. There's way more to living for God than a list of rules and regulations. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. I've never met anybody like Him. 
I've never experienced joy like I found when I repented of my sins and I gave in. Right here. And I said, not my will, but thine. Almost every one of us along the way. I've prayed with many people trying to receive the Holy Ghost. And I've heard more than my share of people say, Lord, I'll do anything. I'll go anywhere. I just need... Why, after six years, do we decide that we want our way? It all started when we gave up our will. That's it. Hello, somebody. Right. And now, because we've become so used to setting the terms on everything we do, and we think we're allowed to set the terms on God. Christians often leave the church because they don't think anyone in the church can answer their questions or make a case. I'm going to tell you something. If you have a question for something we teach or preach, ask the pastor. Yes. Ask them to show you in the Word. Amen. I have confidence they're not preaching something that's not in the Word of God. Amen. That's right. I'm almost done. The gospel according to someone yeah. is the most dangerous gospel you can listen to. Amen. The gospel according to someone. I see it every day. People with inaccurate information posted it as to be the truth. Didn't even take time to check out the fact. Wanted to be the first to say. That term according to, y'all still with me? Yeah. What time is it, brother? Is it 12? Okay, I got it. That word, that phrase, according to, can be used in a lot of different ways. As a preposition, it is used for saying where information or ideas have come from. As a ver adverb, it can mean officially, according to what governments or people in authority say. Although it may not be true, but it's according to them. In someone's opinion, it's used for saying what someone believes. In someone's terms, it's according to your way of considering to understand the situation. From where someone stands. Well, from where I stand, I see it. Yeah. Hello? Bye. That's according to where you are. As the way someone sees it, it's the way they're thinking. In someone's sight, in someone's eyes. On your own terms according to your own conditions. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh. He dwelt among us we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. I've already quoted John 14 and 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The scripture says, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen. Think about that for a moment as we close. We most time think of that. Well, you, you, you'll learn the details. Or if you confess this, you'll be honest. The truth shall set you free. Maybe there's some credence to that. But in the context that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You have to think of it in this way. When you know Him, He shall set you free. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. 
Yes, praise God. That shall set you free. Had another long chapter marked to read. I don't have time to read it. But I, I take that back. I am going to read it. This is straight from God's terms. You know, if you want to conduct business, you better read every bit of the print. Even the fine print. And there's a lot of people buys the devil's lies. But they don't read the small print. I'm trying to preach with all kinds of love and compassion. 2 Thessalonians says, Don't be soon shaken in mind or be troubled either by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you I told you these things. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Verse 7. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way and then shall that wicked be revealed. Even him, verse 9, whose coming is after the work of Satan. Listen to verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, but because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That sounds bad. But it's working in this world. It is happening among us. This is so strange for those stand to preach like this. Because I'm a faith preacher. I'm an encourager. That's my ministry. God dropped in my spirit in the wee hours. This is not on your terms, boy. This is my world. You're just living it. Amen. Yes, yes. But it ain't all bad news, folks. But we are bound to give thanks always to God. Yes. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit, belief of the truth, Whereunto He called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, yes. stand fast yes. and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word yes. or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God, even our Father, whom have loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Amen. Brothers and sisters and friends, if you haven't noticed, there's an onslaught going on. It's not just in the political realm. I know I've got to quit here. But what we're seeing manifested in the flesh is just the results of what's happening in a spirit realm. I, I, I'm not trying to be spooky, but we live in a spiritual world. Hello? And therefore, that's why I preach with patience and long-suffering and love. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. we got to understand that. But don't be deceived. Don't be hoodwinked. There is the spirit of Antichrist at work in this world. The Bible says he will deceive many. 
Don't be deceived. Don't get into thinking that you can set the terms for how, well, God, I'll do this if you do that. Uh, it's never been on our terms. Are you hearing me right now? There are some terms, but God sets the terms. But I've got good news for you today. God's terms are better than any I could have asked for. If I was to set the terms to how merciful I would be with people, it might be you fool me once. Shame on you. You get me twice. Shame on me. But God is rich in mercy. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's God's turn. Our terms is you cheat me, I'll cheat you. Our terms are, I'll show you. His terms were, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Uh, how ridiculous it would be for me to approach Christ with my set of terms and say, I'll follow you if you'll do such and so. Without listening to Him saying, if you'll serve me, I'll do so and so. Uh, he said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I'm telling you, God's terms are better than any terms you can ever dream of or draw up. Quit listening to the lies of the devil that tells you it's too hard to live for God. God has given you a reasonable set of terms. Amen. Quit bargaining with God. You ain't and I don't have a thing to bargain with. Not a thing. But he said, you draw nigh to me. And I'll draw nigh to you. You ask. You shall receive. You seek. You shall find. You knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. He that cometh to God must believe that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Seriously. Seriously? Really? Are any of us really willing, really looking forward to standing before God and say, I didn't do it because of this. I didn't serve you because somebody disappointed me. I didn't serve you because of I got to thinking for myself. That's a dangerous thing. The carnal mind is enmity against God. I'm not insinuating don't think, but don't think after your flesh. Brother Mark was right on this morning. It's not always in the feeling. Sorry for going over noon. I believe, sister. Chris, we ought to be as accommodate, accommodating. I don't think we have to have old wood slat benches that'll pinch your hiney when you sit down like they did 50 years ago in order to be saved. It's okay to have electronic instruments. It's okay to have the words on the wall. That's not doctrine. But it's not okay.
for me to sit on a bench at a pinch of honey or to sit on a padded pew and be sitting there and start thinking, I can select, okay, I'll do that, but I'm not going to do this. Or, I'll listen to this, but I'm not, that I ain't doing that. And, and we become selective, like we're at some buffet. being ugly but if I want to be saved it's going to be on God's terms it's just the way it is one of the largest I started to say this earlier I'm not saying this for shock value one of the largest religious followings in our nation And I'm not being judgmental. I'm just sharing. One of the largest known associations recently, the last few weeks, had a big conference for kids' ministries. People who work with kids' ministries. There's going to be door prizes for the people that went to the conference. It was a workshop type conference. Included in those prizes, to be specific, were several six packs of beer. I'm not here to put anybody in eternal damnation. I'm just telling you. Little by little, it will erode your faith until you fall away. Unless you are not connected to an organization, to a man, or a particular church. Nothing wrong with all those things. But I'll tell you why I follow man. It's the same reason Paul says, You follow me as I follow Christ. I stop following Christ, your obligation to me is over. That's what he's basically saying. But as long as I'm following Christ, you follow me. Because I'm not going to lead you astray. Because I'm not going to preach something that's not in that book. I'm not going to lead you down a road that's going to take you to eternal damnation. I didn't intend to get it all. I'm telling you, thank God for men and women of God that still love and love big, but they preach the word and they preach the truth and they tell us right from God. Amen. Amen. I'm not a negative person. I'm just going to tell you it challenges my thinking, it challenges my spirit. And I've said with a coffee and I've wept salty tears over friends of mine that have walked this gospel way for many years and all of a sudden they got some newfound revelation first it was just a little change in how they live how they conduct themselves. But it rarely stops there. Right. If you wonder why we talk about those things, it's because the trend is worse than the sin. When you pitch your tent toward Sodom, you're not there yet, but you're headed there. And I've watched it then before long. And I just don't preach this way. Maybe I should. But before long, you'll never hear anything go to the pulpit how they baptize. If you want to be baptized, they'll baptize you. But they make no big deal out of how. Pretty soon, one after another, for 
rudiments and fundaments, fundamentals of their faith. And I say this, I don't mean it to be funny, but I remember Brother Johnny James preaching many years ago, old black preacher that was they called the walking Bible. My God, he could preach. Still can. And he talked about some that walked away. And how they used to stand for this. And now it's 180 degrees the other way. And he just said, I want to ask you a simple question. Were you crazy then? Or are you crazy now? Because it can't both be right. I'm not trying to be rude or unkind. The only reason I came to preach today. And I'm preaching something... Not uncomfortable in the fact that I don't believe it. I, I, I'm comfortable in truth. But I, I'd much rather preach and encouraging and positive and faith. But I'm going to tell you something. Before you walk away, you better count the cost to your family. Yes. I've seen many parents walk away. And they somewhere along the line got back. But their kids never did. Is it worth it? Is it worth it just to do what your flesh wants? Right. Or my flesh wants? It's got to be on my terms. Yes, sir. God help us all to find an altar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And once more, say not my will, Lord, but thine be done. As you stand today, if I could remind you, that's the only time that prayer should be prayed. It's not the only time, not just when we want the Holy Ghost, not just when we need something from God, but our daily prayer should say, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. This has not been a polished sermon today, I told you that. I'm not on some political hobby horse. I do remain active in situations and philosophies and government. And I do my duty when it comes to civic things. But I'm smart enough to know the answer to our society is does not lie in a politician of any brand or stripe. Right, right. It lies in us being on our knees yes. and saying, not my will, Lord, yes. but thine be done. What's the old song say, Sister Creasy? It's based, I think, out of Proverbs or Psalms. One of those, search me, O Lord. What's that next line? Do anybody remember? Search me, O oh Lord. Try me, Lord. To see if there's some wicked way in me. I know it's past 12. I know the restaurants are filling up. But would there be anybody before you walk out today take time Ask the Lord to search you. I'm, I'm appealing to you today. I'm not trying to be dramatic with you. I'm just teaching you the truth. Yes, yes. Elder, I've heard this say it for years. But it ain't the truth. I've heard people say it over and over. Well, if I know my heart, Trust me, you don't. That's right. No man. Who can know the heart? It's deceitful and wicked. I'm in the Word of God. But I'm also in the Word of God when it says, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. I hope you've never stopped praying the prayer. Show me, Lord. Lead me and I'll follow. It don't matter if it's, pro if it's popular or not. 
In fact, Lord, if you'll show me, I don't even have to have somebody preach it over the pulpit. If it is preached, and it's in your word, not my will, but thy be done. Because, brothers and sisters, the danger comes when you don't receive a love for the truth. You are open to every bit of deception. I know I'm lingering here. But can I tell you, the challenge to deception, Satan is a deceiver. That was his first act in the garden. An act of deception. He's still a deceiver. And the danger to deception is sometimes it's this close to revelation. How do I tell the difference? Amen. The Amen. Word of God. But listen to me. And I'll share one last thing you mentioned today. The devil. So I tell, okay. You're in the wilderness. You're hungry now. You've been fasting for 40 days. Here's the terms. Turn that stone into bread. I'm hungry. I sure feel like it. But it is written. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I tell you what, here, let's try this turn here. Won't you bow down and worship? First he said, cast yourself down. They'll, they'll catch you. It is written. And he said, why don't you bow down and worship one more time? Our example said, it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and Him only shall thou serve. Those are the terms. Amen. Satan, you don't get to set the terms. You don't decide who backslides. You can tempt, you can deceive, you can accuse, but I decide. Hello? And as for me, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Got the cross before me and the world's behind me. I don't know if this made sense to you today. But I, would you come for a moment in a season of prayer? I know it's probably 1220 or so. I have no clue. We're going to be back at 530 for church. And we're going to sing and we're going to rejoice. But if I was you, somewhere before I walked out today, I would say sincerely, Lord, show me. Examine my spirit, oh God. Search me, oh God. Come on, I'm appealing to you. Search me, oh God. See if there be some way, wicked way in me. God, I'm not trying to be dramatic with you, but there ought not be so many cries in the house today. This is about eternity. It's about, yes, it's a heaven or hell issue. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Search my heart, oh God. Search my heart, oh God. Oh God. Cleanse me, Lord, of every wicked way or thought. Wash me, oh God. The altar's not just for the new people. Oh, you are a way maker, miracle worker, 
father's keeper, light in the dark. Oh. My God, that is I'm sorry for keeping you too long today. It's not my good time, I desire our intention. Stay with the gospel. Stay with the truth. Don't follow your flesh. Don't appease your flesh. Yes, 
Jesus has promised that we can do it. And He's never going to depart from us. He says to me and you, I believe in you. And I want you to know that. Because we live in a world that doesn't. But the Maker, the Creator of all things says, I believe in you. And He has chosen you to take His message to a world in you're precious to the Lord Jesus. Pastors asked me to close the service and we thank all of you again for being here this morning. I pray you've enjoyed it. I know I certainly have and I've learned and I just thank God for the challenge. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a prayer request. Sister. One of our ministers over in Missouri, Brother Kenneth Kirby, was supposed to have a leg amputated today due to infection. He's going to have to have And the family really needs your prayer. Okay, let's remember that minister. In our prayers, yes, ma'am. Okay, let's pray for her that the Lord will superintend that process for her. All right, yes, ma'am. Yes, we'll remember that baby. Yes, yes, ma'am. Sister Crum. Oh, please remember me. I go Tuesday morning to see where I am, so I get on my eyes. Sure. Sister Crum needs prayer. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think I'm going to pray for my grandchildren. Sure. Pray for Brother Bosons. Grandchildren, they've joined the Army. They're in boot camp currently. Pray that God will keep them safe. Yes, ma'am. Sister Jones. Yes, sir. Okay, let's pray that the Lord will provide comfort for that family. He had a loved one pass away. Is that correct? Okay. Well, thank you for bringing that to our attention. All right, any other prayer needs this morning? Anyone else like to mention a prayer? Let's go to the Lord together. Gracious Lord, we thank You that we have heard Your Word that we've had an opportunity to worship, that we've heard beautiful singing. And God, we just thank You. We're so blessed. Lord, we bring these needs before You today, believing that Your Word asks us to, and believing through faith that You can do all these things that have been presented. And so God, we pray for each and every need that's been verbally spoken. We pray also for those unspoken needs in this place, countless of them, that God, You will comfort people today in their spirit and in their heart. And God, I just pray that You'll be with all of us as we leave this place and bring us back safely. In the name of Jesus we ask. Amen. You all, please join us tonight. Brother Stan Cook will be back for a time of singing and we're going to have water baptism. So we're looking forward to that. God bless you all. Please be with us tonight.